Okay, so today we have a Lynx Aurora N32, and this has a Thunderbolt 2 card, and we're gonna install the Lynx LT TB3 card in the L slot. This is uh, the fourth slot here that we're using. So you can see it has the old Thunderbolt 2 style, um, and this new one has the USB-C Thunderbolt 3 style. Um, so yeah, let's go for it. Okay, first thing you gotta do, there are six screws on top of your links. Make sure obviously this is unplugged, not powered. We're gonna go ahead and do this. Okay, so what, it's really important with your Lynx card, it ships in an anti-static bag, and that's because static electricity can damage things like this. So you don't really wanna to touch anything in here if you don't have to. You also wanna make sure to ground yourself before you touch any of this. So you can touch your rack rails, or you can touch uh, you know, some, some sort of screw somewhere that is eventually connected to ground, some chassis piece, something like that. You wanna make sure and ground yourself and don't be getting up and moving around on your rug or wear socks or something that can generate static electricity. So just a word of caution there. Okay, so our next step is to remove this back plate. So you can see there are four screws around the corners here. One, two, three, four. And uh, then we'll probably end up having to unscrew these. Again, this is the LTTB card. Uh, and these are all a little bit different depending on what card you have in this slot. So on this one, we have these two extra screws that we'll have to adjust as well. So on this particular example, we're replacing the entire plate with a new plate that has a new silkscreen text and everything. So we actually need to remove quite a few things on this. These two screws, as well as these, which come, come apart. I recommend using some pliers to get these started and then do the rest by hand. So we're gonna remove these two screws and these four little standoffs. Next, we're going to remove this nut from this power connector. Again, you might want to use a nut driver or pliers just to loosen it a little bit and then do the rest by hand. Okay, now you've got your plate removed. Okay, next we need to remove this screw here. This is very loose now because we've removed the panel but the multi-pin connector is here. So we're gonna remove this screw and then we're going to pull the card out very, very carefully. You can kind of rock it back and forth a little bit like this to get it out. Um, and we're gonna remove the card. Again, make sure that you ground yourself, touch a rack rail, touch something like that before you actually reach in here and touch this. And very, very carefully rock this back and forth to release it and then you can slide the card out. Now, you wanna make sure that if you're trying to resell this card or keep it, that you have the old bracket and all the screws and everything you need to be able to mount this in something else again. So we're just gonna set this aside for now. Okay, we're gonna take our new card out of the bag. Again, I'm being extra safe, extra careful. Ground myself on a rack rail. I'm gonna take it out of the anti-static bag. You can see that this already has the plate installed. So all we have to do now is put it inside of the unit and put our screws back in. Okay, so this little multi-pin connector is pretty tall. So the easiest way to get this in is very carefully start it kind of vertical like this, put it into the cutout, then very, very carefully tilt it up until you can clear the top and get the card through like this. I'm gonna roughly align it like this. Okay, so our first step is we're going to push 
this multi-pin connector down onto the board. So I'm looking from above to see that I can line up the little screw here on the corner and very, very carefully uh, push this down into the slot. Again, you can very, very lightly kind of shove it back and forth. You can see it fits there nicely and you can confirm if you look on top here, the hole is totally centered on this screw hole. Now we're going to put the screw back in, but don't tighten it yet. Okay, just lightly screw it in, just enough to keep it from falling out, okay? We're gonna tighten up these screws in a specific order as recommended by Lynx. Okay, so it's just, it's just loosely in there. It's not even fully tightened, right? It's just in there, just holding it down. Okay, now we're going to go back to our four main screws here around the perimeter. We're going to put those in, so let's do that. Again, I'm not uh, cranking these down just yet. I'm just kind of tightening them till they stop, but very lightly, okay? We're gonna tighten all this stuff back up here in a minute once everything is for sure secured. Now we're going to take these standoffs and put them back into these four holes on the DB25 connectors. Again, you don't have to crank these down. Really, really be careful about that. Link specifically warns about these uh, to not over tighten them because they can break and then you won't be able to easily get your DB25 screwed in. Uh, same with this nut. If you're putting in a new bracket and you need to put that nut back in, be very, very careful. You don't have to tighten it that much. I'm just basically doing them finger tight. Okay, so we've got our four external screws installed. We have our four standoffs installed. Now what we're gonna do is go back and tighten this screw. Again, you don't have to go super tight, enough to secure it, enough to feel like it's not gonna move. There is a lock washer on there, make sure you don't lose that. And then we're gonna go back and just double check and tighten these down just a little bit more. Again, don't crank them, you don't need to, just enough to make sure it's secured. And then with these, I'm just gonna take my pliers and just give them a little bit more of a turn. They don't need much, just enough to make sure they're not gonna move. As soon as you start to feel some resistance, you can stop. Okay, we've tightened up everything. Again, don't wanna over crank it. Now we just have to put our lid back on and uh, just make sure that you're using the side with the countersink uh, part. So we put our lid on our small screws back in. These are very small. And Lynx also recommends not over tightening these because they can be easily stripped because they are small. You want to use a sharp screwdriver and not over tighten. Don't use a drill. And we're done. 